China is a country with infamously harsh laws. There are a lot of things that can get an unsuspecting foreigner into trouble. One wrong move and you could find yourself in prison for a very long time, or more likely, traded in a prisoner exchange eventually. But did you know there are some things that are legal in China but not in the US? Here are five areas where China looks at the US and goes, lighten up, man. Number 5. Counterfeiting Kind of China is a popular location for major corporations who want to take advantage of the cheaper production and labor costs available in the country. So much in fact that it's hard to find a product without Made in China on the label, and if you can, the odds are good it might come with a premium price tag. But that's been changing a bit in recent years, with many companies shifting production to other Asian nations like South Korea, India, and Vietnam, and some to Mexico. And there is one big reason for this – intellectual property rights. It's been one of the biggest challenges for manufacturers in recent years. They develop a hot new piece of technology, they troubleshoot it in their American labs, they perfect the design, and then they send it overseas to be mass-produced in Chinese factories. The product hits the market, shortly followed by the Chinese knockoff, which might not have all the features and might break unexpectedly, but it's close enough to take a bite out of the company's profits. China is a massive hub for the manufacture and trade of counterfeit goods, and stopping the flow has been a major challenge. So, is counterfeiting legal in China? Not exactly, but the country's focus on this is very different from what you would find in the US. United States intellectual property laws are designed with the business in mind, with the government serving as an enforcement arm to ensure that the company's holdings are protected. China, however, has a state-run economy. While the country isn't really communist anymore, with a robust private sector, all companies operating in China's border answer to the government. Thus, intellectual property rights, which do not have a long history in China, are narrowly based on promoting socialist legality with Chinese characteristics. That makes it an uphill battle for any foreign corporation to enforce its intellectual property rights in Chinese territory, and the result has been a counterfeiting boom. In January 2023, a report was released by the Office of the U.S. Trade Representative that identified China as the world's largest purveyor of counterfeit goods. In fact, the U.S. revealed that around 75% of all counterfeit and pirated goods seized by U.S. Customs could be traced back to either China or its reincorporated province of Hong Kong. With few options for enforcement allowed in Chinese courts and Western corporations often facing a hostile environment if they challenge Chinese authorities, companies are usually left to try to stem the tide of counterfeit products by stopping the import of goods via customs. But as the problem gets worse, some Chinese companies are trying some new techniques. Diplomatic pressure from powerful trade partners of China has led Xi Jinping to promise a crackdown on counterfeiting. He's made noises toward improving intellectual property rights, but so far that hasn't amounted to much. And while big companies have had the clout to influence policy, small businesses don't, and often they find themselves on their own. One woman who invented a device to help children taking violin lessons hold their bow properly tried to crack the Chinese market, only to quickly find her niche device had already been cloned and sold as a bootleg in China, at a fraction of the price she set. Making it worse, the counterfeiters had stolen her patent and registered it in China. Fortunately, she had a lawyer who could go to court in China and show proof of a fraudulent patent, but it didn't take long before the duplicates emerged again, a process she described as like playing whack-a-mole. And those bootlegs make their ways overseas as well. The best attempt to stem Chinese counterfeiting might not be in China but might come from multinational tech companies. Sites like Amazon, eBay, and other e-commerce sites frequently bring in Chinese products, and that means the bootlegs often wind up there. The Trump administration scored a win in the battle against duplicate products when it threatened those companies, which forced them to develop better enforcement procedures of counterfeits, but that's just a small part of the larger problem. The only way to stem a tide of counterfeiting at the core is to cooperate with Chinese authorities, hope you have the money and resources to fight a long legal battle and political battle, and bring some good lawyers to secure your trademark, and be prepared to fight that fight as many times as it takes. Doing business in China can be a thorny affair, but so can dining, because you won't believe what's on the menu. Number 4. Eat Anything The year was 2020, and a deadly new virus was spreading across the world. Global lockdowns, millions of dead, and several furious new political movements later, everyone was searching for one thing – someone to blame. 
As conspiracy theories swirled around, the fact that the virus had seemingly originated in China led to a common theory, that the virus had jumped from animal to human at one of the country's famous wet markets. These traditional markets sell meat, produce, and many other perishable goods that you might find at a farmer's market. They're common in urban areas of China, especially those with a lower average income where supermarkets haven't taken over yet. So what's the big deal? Sounds like standard food shops. Except that the offerings at these tend to get a little exotic. Many wet markets sell only standard regulated goods, but many also have a thriving black market where just about any meat is available. This can include local wildlife, imported meat, and even urban animals commonly considered pets. If this sounds unsanitary, it is. Chinese authorities have technically banned the sale of wildlife at these markets since 2003 and the SARS outbreak, but the massive overpopulation in many Chinese cities means a thriving black market exists and enforcement is difficult, to put it lightly. And this has led to some unexpected guests at the market. The most common suspects for the animal that was infected with the virus that jumped to humans included bats, pangolins, and raccoon dogs, all of which are rather cute animals who suffered a massive PR blow from the virus. Was any of them actually to blame? It's not clear, as China's research into the virus origin is heavily classified and relations between China and the US are at a low point, so no extensive cooperation has been done on the subject. In the aftermath of COVID-19, China did regulate wet markets further and release a list of animals that could be legally sold, primarily common food animals like cows, pigs, chickens, and fish, but the Chinese laws are still far more liberal than those in the US. Animals like alpaca and deer are commonly on the menu, including a beloved animal in America, the noble horse. China is one of the world's top consumers of horse meat. But does this include man's best friend? It's unfortunately one of the most common stereotypes regarding Asian people, that they eat dogs and cats. But dog meat did commonly show up in wet markets in China for many years, as one of the many animals that wound up on the menu of people looking for some or any meat. Dog did not wind up on the approved list of meats when China revised its regulations in 2020, but there has been no widespread attempt to crack down on the practice. It is likely that the consumption of rare animals in China, including wildlife and those commonly considered pets in the West, is more of a product of widespread poverty than any special sort of tradition in Chinese culture. But there is no question that a visit to a Chinese wet market could be a massive culture shock for any American with less than adventurous tastes. And it's not just that China's standards are loose, it's that the US's standards are unusually high. The US Food Regulation Agency is one of the strictest in the world, especially when it comes to imports. As such, some of the most beloved foods around the world are banned in the United States. These include authentic Scottish haggis because it contains sheep lung, as well as desserts like cognac-based jellies because of the choking hazard and even traditional Kinder Eggs because the plastic toy contained within could be hazardous if kids swallow it. So for those looking to broaden their culinary horizons, China might be a better destination than the United States. However, don't be surprised if you get more than you bargained for. It's not the only area where animals might be backing away slowly. Number 3. Trade in Endangered Species they're some of the most magnificent creatures in the world and some of the most endangered. The powerful rhino, its sharp horn at the ready to gore any predator that threatens it. The fearsome tiger, one of the world's best hunters with its majestic striped coat. And of course, the largest living land animal, the massive elephant. All of them are stunning to look at, but they're also relentlessly hunted for sport and for valuable parts of their body. As their populations dwindle, with all three endangered and several species of rhino going extinct, the world has taken measures to protect them, banning trade of products made from these animals. But that doesn't always work, especially when not everyone's on board. When people think of who's hunting endangered animals, their mind might go to rich Americans coming over to Africa to trophy hunt. But these prominent cases, like the infamous dentist who killed the beloved Cecil the lion, are often the outliers. Not only are they a small portion of hunting incidents, but they're often legal organized trophy hunts that cull older animals to provide money to the locals. The vast majority of hunting is done by local poachers and often well organized and heavily armed. These groups are often composed of young men who seek one of the few reliable income streams in the area, because they're the seller, but the buyer is elsewhere. China is one of the world's top locations for exotic wildlife trade, because some animal parts have roots in traditional medicine in the country. It's long been believed in Chinese culture that both rhino horn and tiger bones have medicinal qualities, and that means those who still subscribe to the old ways will pay a premium to get their hands on the dwindling supply. The poachers hunt the animals wherever they can be found, usually butcher the animal and collect the parts for easy transport, and then send them to China where they can be covertly sold. 
The sort of professional poaching for profit is considered the largest contributing factor to the possible extinction of these animals. And the world is taking action, but China is proving to be a spanner in the works. The United Nations has a multilateral treaty called the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, also known as the Washington Convention, which aims to prevent extinction as a result of international trade. Almost every country is a member of it, with only a few small exceptions like North Korea. China does participate in the treaty, but with some major caveats. Much like with the wet markets and counterfeiting, there's a massive black market in China and it's made easy for illicit trade in wild animals and endangered species to run rampant without the government cracking down. But it's not all under the table anymore. Wildlife conservationists were shocked in 2018 when China announced that it was legalizing medicinal trade in both rhino horns and tiger bones, overturning a 25-year-old ban. This didn't throw the floodgates open and impose stricter regulations, such as only allowing the products to be used in medical research or by accredited doctors in hospitals or to trade in antique parts. Tiger and rhino parts currently owned can be kept, but not sold privately. But conservationists pointed out one problem with this, there is no proof of any sort of medical benefit to using either of these products. While they're common in folk medicine, most analysts believe them to simply be very expensive placebos, but China might have an ulterior motive for this. While the rhinoceros is mostly hunted in the wild, China does have a tiger breeding program on farms, and these tigers are regularly slaughtered for meat, skin, medicinal product, and even wine made with tiger bones. The new regulations led many people to think that this was a way to stimulate that local industry. Some argue that this is a way to control the poaching that endangers the species, while others say it would be far better to just control the flow of products altogether and choke off the supply. But the news isn't all bad when it comes to endangered species in China. Tigers and rhinos are two of the three prongs of the wildlife trade, with the third being elephant ivory. Unlike tigers and rhinos, China has cracked down harshly on the illegal ivory trade since banning it fully in 2017. This resulted in the arrests of many criminals trying to sell jewelry and other items made from ivory. But while the government has cracked down on the trade, a massive illegal market still exists and China is one of the easiest places to find products made from endangered animals in an everyday market square. Sometimes it seems you can trade in just about anything in China and with just about anyone. Number 2. Sanctions? What sanctions? In the United States, trade with many countries is an everyday affair. The US is part of a global economy and trades with just about anyone. Despite tensions being high as ever with China, the two remain among each other's top trading partners. However, that doesn't mean the US is trading with everyone. There are several countries that the US doesn't trade with and has strongly suggested that others shouldn't either. These include the Hermit Kingdom, North Korea, for its nuclear program, its hostage taking, its human rights violations, and its funding of terrorism. It also includes Iran, for many of the same reasons, as well as smaller countries like Venezuela and Syria. Most famously, it includes Russia, primarily for the country's brutal ongoing invasion of Ukraine, which has left it a global pariah. And China is joining forces to sanction none of them. While China and the US are not officially enemies, the two are just short of Cold War at the moment. China sees itself as a regional power and a rising superpower, making it the closest possible rival to the US. As such, it's trying to form a coalition with nations that might be out of the US's orbit, both those that aren't committed to either side and those who are actively opposed to them. That's led China to keep its options open, refusing to sanction most global pariah nations and even becoming the chief supplier for many of them. But each situation is a little bit different and sometimes volatile. In the case of Russia, China plays a key role, but maybe not the way Russia wants. The term BRICS has been all over the media in recent months, referring to a supposed alliance of China, Russia, Brazil, India, and South Africa. Of course, these five countries aren't actually aligned, and the entire terminology stems from a Goldman Sachs investment report about rising economies. But as Russia finds itself increasingly isolated, China has become one of the key suppliers of domestic goods and military supplies like body armor, as well as being an important import of Russian goods, many of which are under embargo. However, it's held off in one key area. It won't sell Russia weapons for the war in Ukraine yet. This is likely because it doesn't want to be targeted by secondary sanctions as well as because right now Putin's war looks like a loser and she doesn't want to bet on losers. But in other cases, China is looking for more direct ways to poke at the US. China and the Islamic Republic of Iran have a long history with relations between the two dating back to 1937. But in recent years, as Iran's nuclear program gained steam and disputes between the country and the United States increase, China has made an effort to pull Iran into its orbit. In March 2021, the two countries signed a 
25-year cooperation agreement that includes increased strategic and economic arrangements. However, much like with Russia, China isn't looking to give Iran everything it wants. It's not clear if China actually wants to aid Iran's nuclear program or if they're simply willing to let the chips fall where they may. And of course, there's no country where relations are thornier than with their neighbor to the east. North Korea might be the most isolated country in the world, both by choice and by sanctions. The highly secure nation has been dominated by one family, the Kims, since the Korean War, and still only has an uneasy armistice with its southern neighbor. But while the dictatorship is sanctioned by most of the world, its neighbor is more than willing to help it out. The two countries have a mutual aid and cooperation treaty since 1961, and China is North Korea's main source of luxury goods. The two have regular diplomatic relations, and while trading with these three countries could be serious legal trouble in America, it's everyday business in China. But does China have sanctions against any country? Yes, but that depends on who you ask. China has imposed sanctions on Taiwan as part of its campaign against the island nation. Of course, if you ask Chinese leadership, that's not sanctions against an enemy country. It's an internal political matter involving a rogue province. Sanctions are ultimately more of a political matter than a moral or legal one, and that means if anyone has dealings they want to accomplish with Russia, Iran, or North Korea, China would be a good home base. But of course, none of the countries are particularly safe travel or business destinations. Meanwhile, there's one more thing you can do in China, but not in the US. But only one person has done it, and he's not giving it up anytime soon. Number 1. Be President for Life Politics in China is very different from the United States. While leaders are technically elected, they're picked not by a general vote, but by the Chinese Communist Party leadership. They pick the ruling party's representative, vote for him to take the position, and then he's usually rubber-stamped in elections with little to no opposition. There have only been a few people to hold these leadership positions, with Xi Jinping being the latest. Typically, these politicians serve a two-term period before being term-limited out and replaced by the next functionary. But Xi Jinping isn't like most politicians. He doesn't seem to view himself as a soldier of the CCP, but rather a powerful dictator in his own right. He wanted more power, and he got it. At the annual sitting of the National People's Congress in 2018, the delegates voted to remove the term limits, allowing Xi Jinping to run for a third term, and possibly much more. While he isn't officially president for life, he was granted a third term by the acclamation and has steadfastly refused to elevate any potential successors. Given his tendency toward authoritarian rule, it's highly unlikely any potential successors will stick their neck out and challenge his leadership, and so the next term may be a formality as well. No doubt many politicians want this in the US. That's why they can't have it. For the first 150 years of the United States, there were no term limits. George Washington simply bowed out after two terms, and everyone else held themselves to that standard. While Abraham Lincoln might have wanted a longer tenure to see Reconstruction through, an assassin's bullet left that question unanswered. It wasn't until Franklin Delano Roosevelt, in the middle of the Great Depression and World War II, that a president decided to go for more than eight years. He got four terms before dying in office. And soon after, Congress and the states passed a constitutional amendment saying eight is enough. While the idea of repealing the amendment has come up a few times, especially from a certain TV host turned politician, it seems like anyone who wants to be president for life is going to have to head abroad. Is China actually more liberal than the US in these areas? Not exactly. Most of these areas where the laws are stricter in the US are a product of centuries of the culture moving in different directions and different values. And one thing is for sure, no one is getting that President for Life title out of Xi Jinping's hands. For more on life in China, check out Weird Rules That Only Exist in China, or watch American Prison vs. Chinese Prison, which is actually worse, for a look at what happens when you wind up on the wrong side of the law.